Why, hello everyone, and welcome to the stream. This is a Taku show, but and it looks like I have to reset my webcam yet again. Oh boy, that's that's slideshow. That's a slideshow here. Let me boop and reactivate it. There, there we go. Hi, that's better. <laughs> welcome to the stream. Today is Tuesday, December. 13th, 2022. How was the weekend? It was definitely a weekend of all time. Uh, so, I did not play Factorio all that much over the weekend. I did get a few things done, and I didn't finish one thing that we're going to begin the day with uh, here uh, with Copper. I... I sort of have a big copper build where all of the buildings have been placed. I need to do all of the logistics between each line on the thing. So that's what we'll be starting with today. And that ultimately will make um, molten, molten copper. And then we have to go and cast the molten copper and then make acetylene. And then mine lead. That that is the plan for the day today. However, over the weekend, what what did I get up to? Oh boy. So, um, I finished my Pokemon Violet Pokedex. I I I I finally got around to finishing it. It's the fastest I've completed a Pokedex I think ever. Actually, dis despite Scarlet and Violet being like the buggiest, technically deficient Pokemon games ever, they're also like the best Pokemon games ever. So, <laughs> eh, yeah, they they've got they got lots of qu good quality of life fixes changes. I I enjoy the experience. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gone out of the way to complete the Pokedex by literally beating the game twice being it both on violet and then on scarlet to trade over the exclusives from scarlet to violet um yeah there's 400 in the pokedex for uh for scarlet and violet it's a it's a set of 400 and then there's like a few that aren't technically in the pokedex like uh the seven star Charizard raid, they basically just gave everyone the Charmander Charmeleon Charizard <laughs> by doing that because you could breed the Charizard. And so, even though I never took part in that raid, which I think is now, <laughs> there's like another chance at it, but people have been breeding and throwing away Charmanders that they have bred. Uh, through the surprise trade mechanic, so I've gotten a few of those through surprise trades, but uh, yeah, I finally I finally got the whole thing. There there are very few that are like annoying. There are very few annoying Pokemon this time around, which is very nice. is very is very nice. There there's a couple of necessary trades withheld items. Hello, Abe, welcome to the stream today. Yeah, there, there's two trades required withheld items as the cats want to fight each other today. Ah, yeah, there's there's the Scyther to Scizor, which needs a Metal Coat trade, and then there's Slow Bro, or blah, Slow Poke to Slow King, which is King's Rock trade. But you can buy both of those items in a store, and do the trade if 
you either know someone with the with another copy of the game or have another console, which ahem, I have two consoles and a copy of each game. So I'm in a unique situation where this is very, very easy for me to do. Gee, I wonder why I own two consoles in the first place. Actually, it was not for Pokemon. It was for Animal Crossing so that I could have other players to water my flowers so I could breed flowers faster in Animal Crossing New Horizons. That That's why I bought a Switch Lite and a second copy of Animal Crossing in the first place. I knew it would also work with Pokemon, making that process a little bit easier, but yeah. So that was a thing that I did. I, I finished the Pokedex. I don't, I don't know if I want to necessarily go back in immediately to do the rest of the post-game content and or form a living Pokedex, which is basically taking it the next step up, having a copy of every Pokemon in your boxes, because uh, the Pokedex is just a record of have you ever had, and you can evolve Pokemon and you won't have that previous evolution anymore if you've evolved something, right? So going the living next route, you need to have all of the steps, every single one of those 400. Uh, and that's a process. And then the next step up above that is, of course, the nearly impossible process of a shiny living Pokedex. Oh boy, that, that would be the next step. That's the several thousand hour range to uh, potentially accomplish, and you can't even do it with all of them. Pretty sure. Pretty sure you can't even get all Pokemon as shinies, but you can get all the ones that are available as shinies. If you so desire. That, that, would, be, that would be like the final step, but it, to even consider doing any of that, they need to improve the performance of the games. Uh, just straight up. I've done what I wanted to do. If I want to play it anymore, there has to be further patches to uh, improve performance. I also got parts for Game Boy Colors uh, in the mail uh, later in the week last week, so I was working on building a few more Game Boy Colors to list on eBay. I uh, got new screens for some that needed screens, as well as cases for them. Cases that needed uh, trimming, that need trimming to fit the new screens. New backlit, very good quality screens. And that's an experience, having to trim plastic cases properly to fit the new screens. It takes a little bit of time to do that, uh, even with my flush cutters, my, my small flush cut trimmers, if I, I probably don't even have it on my desk, or accessible next to me at the moment. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah, here they are, these things. Yeah, little, little flush trimmers. You see there's a little, there's a little thing of teal plastic, because I worked on a on a, on a red and a teal. The place that sent, that I bought these items from for the holidays had an offer. If you spend a certain amount, you get free shipping. So I got free shipping, but also giveaways, quote unquote giveaways. Uh, and they sent two extra cases, two extra cases, the UV printed cases. I didn't order UV printed cases, but I got two free UV printed cases. I got one that's like dark link here. You could like barely see, but this one, this one's dark link. The other one was a Mew. White and pink and purple Mew uh, UV printed case. And I built a normal, quote unquote normal Game Boy Color in that yesterday. Uh, so that that's not easily accessible. It's on the other other side. I have to get up if I wanted to show that one. But yeah, built a just normal screen, normal system, 
uh, I put in white buttons on it on the white ish case. So that one's nice. It looks nice. I hope it sells at a nice price, but yeah. Uh, didn't, I didn't want to put the new screens in them because they came with uh, screen lenses that had more of the design on them. And those lenses are not the same. They're not the correct size for the screens that I got. Um, I'd have to get smaller screens. <sighs> Which also get sold. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. Anyway. Anyway, hi, we're we're here. It's Factorio time. We currently don't have kitties. They're around, but not up top today. So, Factorio, you have a few things to talk about. <clears throat> Last time we met, uh, I got logs. And that was basically it. I got logs last time. That was, that was the whole of the stream, and we went, like, close to half an hour overtime just to be able to finish the logs. But we did it. I got, I got the logs. I'm bringing the logs to my to my mall now I have I have logs I've extended the thingy out a little bit I'll need to put the names in on these train stations that's another thing that I need to do I normally put the names of like the patrons and the members on YouTube on my train stations in the mall I'll get to that at some point <laughs> relatively shortly I uh, got tin processed from off-screen work where I had off-screen built the tin factory going into the last stream. I, I sort of had done this. It's a fairly sizable build. It's sizable. I realized today that I had uh, I had put the wrong things on the wrong lines on my voiding array. <laughs> So I ended up with, uh, yeah, stacks of a thousand ash not getting voided in here because these middle ones didn't have fuel. Whoopsies. Lipsies. Uh, so this makes molten, and I am casting in this factory over here. This mega factory will be only casting. Uh, and that's where I will cast copper when we get to copper so off screen I have gone and I've mined uh, just a bit of copper uh, when I get the remaining mining drills on here this will be two times 75 belts worth of iron uh, iron of copper uh, blah so two compressed yellow belts ultimately with deadlocks compression that should be a hundred and fifty or per second up to I have two trains I will need more considering I'm processing the ore all the way over here so this this distance as well as the 75 or per second that I'm going to need uh, yeah that's going to demand multiple trains to actually provide that throughput in the current state of the game uh, just because the trains basic trains are significantly slower than vanilla they are uh, it's actually awful how badly they accelerate to their top speed they're faster than the car at top speed but that acceleration is awful combined with the fact that they only have uh, uh, half the amount of slots on the wagons as default as vanilla they only they only carry 20 stacks each so yeah it's uh, making me think uh, maybe I should have made this a 2-4 uh, network rather than a 1-2 uh, I'll, I'll have to think about that for 
next time I play Pandas mods that, hey, they've halved the storage space in each wagon in for the vanilla wagons, maybe I should design around larger trains if I'm going to be building in this way. Um, it's a little too late at this point to make my trains longer. It's, it's, a, it's a bit too late for that. That fundamentally changes all of the train station designs. Um, doesn't necessarily affect the rail network itself, just the stations. I have several stations that would need to be adjusted if I were to try to make my trains longer by adding a couple of extra wagons and locomotive. Ah, because that's, that's another problem. That would also change the fuel stop as well. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's just, it would be a lot of work. Anyway. So. I have built this as well. Uh, what else have I done? Any other, like, factory stuff? So, I have coal gas now. Coal gas, this is a copy-paste of sin gas that I had set up over here. So, it's this part of the sin gas build. And I said I was going to do this. I, like, pasted it on stream last, I think it was last time. Uh, went, built it. It's fine. It's working. It's making coal gas and more tar. Uh, I have doubled, quote-unquote doubled, the... Uh, coke production from our 75 coke per second aka one compressed yellow belt uh, to now being twice that up to twice that we're working on getting the secondary crushers uh, in here uh, these are restricted by duralumin I'm pretty sure that's the uh, that's the bottleneck on these buildings is duralumin now. Uh, that between that and rubber, though those are the current bottlenecks, which is sort of why I'm gonna work towards getting into aluminium processing stage two <laughs> going forward, because I do want molten aluminium casting, and I want molten aluminium so that I can use the uh, molten duralumin recipe, molten-based duralumin recipe, that will use the aluminium and copper as molten to make a lot more duralumin than the plates. However, it will require me to do phosphate processing first, which, wouldn't you know it, it's a really good thing we spent a stream making a belt of logs. Making making 15 logs per second. Cuz uh yeah, this is going to eat up a lot of uh a lot of wood in the phosphine gas step. This is a lot of wood. Yeah, uh I'll I'll have to I'll have to work on that. We're still working on the seaweed, too. I was going to do seaweed today, but um, I honestly don't think I'll get 700 science for it. My science is limited by stone bricks. Of all things, it's limited by stone bricks to make the most basic automation science. I could fix that, but I'm okay with the current rate of tech. There's there's plenty enough to do in the meanwhile. Last thing to talk about. I have added all of the missing recipes from Bob's modules to unlock with basic electronics. Not all of these are technically supposed to unlock at basic electronics, but it changes nothing. 
if they do, because the other modules that use these things, specifically the uh, logic boards and the processor boards, the modules that use these are already tech locked. We don't need them to be tech lock and item locked. That's unlocking at that tech, right? But theoretically, this is supposed to unlock at the more advanced electronics techs uh, for the logic board and processor board, I believe. Um, but everything else, I believe, uh, unlocks around this basic electronics tech. And I think that's part of what the incompatibility was to begin with, is that these items were unlocking in technologies that PyMods changes and it was like deleting them from the face of existence off of those techs, um, which is weird, which is weird. So, yeah, because it did, we still have the uh, effect transmission techs and the module effect combining techs. They all exist in here. So it's not like there was a tech that was added in that unlocked like the lab module lab. But anyway, I now have access to uh, this recipe now to make the module labs. So that's great. It's it's going to work exactly as normal. I will note that King Arthur has stated that he is going to quote unquote my term Piify Bob's modules uh, bring a make it rather than compatible make it an integration I'll call it integration rather than compatibility uh, by I suppose bringing in more of the pie stuff into some of these recipes uh, for Bob's modules uh, so I considered what I just put to be more of a compatibility patch a temporary compatibility patch, and I have posted this on my Discord, and I have sent this to one of the folks who's working on Pi Post Processing, because uh, this was added to the compatibility Lua file in Pi Post Processing, just a block that checks for the mod and then checks the recipes, pulls in the recipes, and adds the unlock. It's really, 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 really simple, uh, the change to... Uh, make these things unlock at this tech or any tech you want really but yeah so with all of that in mind uh, modules are gold locked so we need to keep in mind that uh oh hey modules be gold locked and right that's the other thing that i have not done at this point uh i have not set the four through eight level modules to be created within the, uh, I think it's the PCB factory that uh, these guys get made in. Yeah, so level one, two, and three are in the PCB factory. This is, this is what I will expect King Arthur to bring in in the official... Uh, compatibility for Bob's modules, bringing in the module 4 through 8 being done in the PCB factory rather than in a regular assembling machine. Things of that nature. Now he said, King Arthur said, within the year, to work on this compatibility. Now, I don't know about you, but the year... Is coming up quick. That's uh, that's within the month. We're we're almost halfway through the month. Year's almost over, so I'm gonna doubt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna doubt that uh, it will actually happen within this month. But he did. He he technically said that it will happen in uh soon soon sometime this year 
he says sometime this year go go through and do actual compatibility for bob's mods more general bob's mods not just bob's modules sometime this year this year he says this year which this year ends soon <laughs> we have two and a half weeks left in this year we shall see i have my doubts i i absolutely have my doubts about that one uh but i have sent that compatibility stuff to not not melon uh i sent the update to deadlocks that uh makes it so that uh the chemical fields will output stacked ash uh, and i sent the basic bob's modules compatibility block i don't know if that'll be even remotely put in it's not absolutely necessary but it gets it technically working Yeah, <laughs> yes, when he said this year, you couldn't see the year on the calendar he was pointing at. He could have been pointing at 2099. Could have been pointing at the year 2069. It's like, oh yes, this year. Ah, uh, anyway, I need to now begin work. Begin work on copper. We have, we has a copper set up here that needs some logistics done to it. And oh boy, I, I wanted to do this between streams, but I just couldn't. I just couldn't bring myself to do it, to finish it. I was in a bit of a stupor uh, for these past few days. I didn't really feel like playing games really in in the evenings especially just just wasn't feeling it i got this done mostly yesterday but oof it's it's been a battle recently to have energy to really do much of anything Ah, but what I have done, I, I managed to sort of catch up with the show that I've been watching this season, the anime that I've been watching this season, the, the one and the only show. Ah, that's been just lovely there, that there's been a grand total of one show I was interested in watching, even remotely interested in watching. That's That's been Beast Tamer. On Crunchyroll. That's the only thing that I was even remotely interested in. All the other stuff is... I I'm not interested in any of the other anime this season. They all are... Well, everything this season seems rather dumb and stupid gimmicks. But the one I'm watching is the only one I could tolerate. And I just, I'm not interested in these big action shows anymore. That, that Yeah, this season, every, everyone was like all super excited. These big action shows like Chainsaw Man coming out. And I'm like, the fu? You're, you're excited about a dude with two chainsaws for arms? Like, huh? I don't... I, I, I just... I don't. Like, I... I don't. I, I don't find it interesting. And I also don't really find Spy Family all that interesting, either. It's like... Okay, it's a thing that exists, a concept that's 
literally been done before as a movie. It's like, eh, eh. It's like, do you do you really want to watch Mr. and Mrs. Smith again? As as an anime rather than as a movie? Because that's what it is, <laughs> and that's all it is. Ah, uh, I'm just I'm not I'm not in not that interested in it. Maybe eventually, but not live. Not not what it's not as it's releasing. Uh, this is gonna be copper or at copper. Sure. Uh, so the beauty of this setup is that it is processing grade four copper into molten. And I will note that in this process, there is a set of rejects that can get processed directly into plates, but I'm going to void them rather than make additional plates. I've pretty much always done this. I, I made the plates the very first time I played through Pyandons mods back on off the rails. I did set it up to process this stuff, the low grade copper dust. Um, the problem is that you have to you have to process it into something else, the low grade copper, and then you have to cast the low grade copper. And there is nothing else you can ever do to it. If you could use this to make molten, I would absolutely do this extra step to make additional molten, but because it only casts directly through Foundry, I have no reason to ever do it. Now, as for why I have no reason to ever do it, uh, that comes down to uh, the fact that it is you that you always have to use that specific copper plate output before any other copper plate output. Otherwise, you will uh, bottleneck your system. You'll you'll deadlock your system if you aren't using that specific copper plate uh, production ahead of everything else. And then what happens if you need to use molten copper and not copper plates? It's like, well, <clears throat> you're screwed out of getting any molten copper if you're backed up on plates. And I'm not going to void plates. I'd rather just void the uh, the dust here as low-grade copper dust and not deal with it. That was definitely an opportunity that they had to make a change in here that would have been a, very, a, a good change, but they didn't do it. They haven't done it. Uh, just making it so that it outputs molten rather than outputting plates directly. I think that's always been the one of the biggest issues on copper. One of the, one of the main buffs it could ever get would be why hello, why he why hello, Ollie. Well, welcome. Why why did you bring me Dolly's baby? Why why did you bring me Dolly's baby? Huh? You brought you brought me dollies. Where's yours? Where's Chipmunk? You you brought me your, you brought me dollies, huh? Uh, we went to the pet store this weekend and got them some of the food that we can't usually find at the store, regular grocery store, and we got them some. Uh, we we had to go to get their litter, but we got. Uh, a few Christmas toys for them. We got them some toys for Christmas, so that's... They've got some fun stuff for Christmas, huh? Coming up, yeah. 
They've got some fun stuff waiting. They've got fun stuff waiting. But we also got this nice little basket. This nice little teal basket. It says, no touchy. No touchy the kitty toys. No touchy the kitty toys. And we put all the kitty toys in the basket. So that was that was nice. We couldn't we couldn't get everything that we wanted for the kitties though. We don't didn't have enough monies to go around for getting all of the things for the kitties that we wanted to get. Huh. <sighs> Cause for a while now they've needed to get a new tree, new cat tree. Just never been able to get it. To get one. Uh, the cat tree we've we had right now is we've had since we got coal to begin with and that was a long time ago a very long time ago that was like 2012 so that their cat tree yeah is over 10 years old at this point And these cats destroyed it. You've destroyed. Yes, you've destroyed because of these claws. Yes, these claws have destroyed your tree. You've, you've broken your tree. Not really broken, but they've... Uh, they've really done a number on the carpeting that's on the tree. Where did it go? Where did it go? Huh? I don't know. I don't see. I don't see it. Where'd it go? Where'd you drop it? Did you drop it into my trash can? I don't think so. I don't see it. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've... They've like wrecked the carpeting on the cat tree on the on the sides in particular using it as a scratching post and the actual scratching post part made of like rope around the actual scratching post part. Yeah, that rope is like coming undone. It's coming unwrapped from the cat tree. It's like, oh, great. Wonderful. The problem is that cat trees cost over a hundred dollars. Like a hundred and fifty to sixty dollars plus. It's like, oh, well, yeah, that's not happening. And continues to not happen. Anyway, I should probably talk about this process. Uh, so you take the ore in, it processes in a ton of automated screeners. Uh, into grade 2 and grade 1 copper. The grade 1 gets crushed into grade 2, additional grade 2, so we have a bit of grade 2, and that grade 2 processes into rejects and grade 3. The rejects process into additional grade 3. The grade 3 will process into grade 4 and low grade rejects. The low grade rejects will process into the copper dust as well as additional grade 4. Now, the copper dust will get voided. The grade four combined value will get processed into molten. Uh, borax, I have a bunch stacked. I have a, a stacked yellow belt of this, so I'm not worried about this using 16.19 or 16-ish, roughly. These numbers are a little bit higher because um, it's like 0.29, something closer like that, or point to seven getting closer interesting really interesting huh that's how it's rounding 
All right, then. Because if I if I flip this and say input exactly 75 or it's it says 113.3 and not 113.2, uh, but I need it in this orientation so that I know how much how many electrolyzers I need for the oxygen. If I if I flip this to be ingredient input or it to be yeah the ingredient input, um, it won't. Yeah, 113.3 right here. It won't tell me how many electrolyzers I need on the oxygen because that counts it as an input that's separate and I need to, like, define it um, uh, in here. It just it doesn't tell me this step. That's a limitation on Helmod. So that that's the basics. The problem is that it's uh, so many buildings to do this much processing all at once. And yes, I am absolutely doing this much processing all at once. Uh, the benefit of this is that it can be technically, theoretically scaled uh, and potentially four of them in a single square, like so. So yeah, I could, I could fit four of this into a single unit if I really wanted to. I doubt I will have to, but you never know with Pyanaz mods. It's definitely a thing that could happen. Speaking of which, uh, this process, I need these pins here. This process is going to produce a grand total 30 and 15. I can stack some of the items here. Some of the items here. I can stack everything through grade two. After grade two, I cannot stack anything. I cannot stack the copper rejects. I cannot stack the grade three. I cannot stack the low grade copper dust and I cannot stack the grade four or the low grade rejects because that level of stacking happens after uh, Pi Science 2 despite it being logistics science packs now could I change this through the mod compatibility in Pi post processing perhaps yes yes uh, technically, but um, I think it would make more sense if the specific recipes were to unlock at stacking one rather than at stacking two or introduce a separate stacking tech that doesn't unlock a stacker but does unlock additional recipes. I think that's probably the better route to go. Uh, is to have a logistics science tech that unlocks at actual logistics science that unlocks the or intermediates that are available at logistics science because yeah this it's a lot of tech to chew through through pi science 2 to get to this not pi science 2 recipe or technology I should say just to get access to the copper stuff the rest of the iron stuff etc for for stacking these things it's uh it's a little annoying it's a little annoying but I need to decide here where I want to do the stacking if I want to run two lines here because I could do the stacking here, we could filter out the copper grade two or one, doesn't doesn't really matter. And we can have grade one, we can have grade two, like in here, and grab that, paste that five times, or four more times, I should say.
Uh, and I want the grade one on the inside because that grade one's getting processed to grade two in the next step. Uh, da -da 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 I'm realizing that needs to be a tile up. Wonderful. Eh, I guess that works. That should do it. So now we have stacked grade one and stacked grade two, as the kitty has left. All of the grade one uh, needs to process to stone and grade two uh, in here. So this grade one needs to then unstack in here. Now we deal with exactly a belt of grade one so technically, I don't need to stack it in the first place. However, by doing so, it helps with the actual, uh, like, compression with on, within the belts. It makes it so that I don't have to deal with having a fully compressed belt. Uh, there are some efficiency losses we could get from things trying to go through the full compression, especially if we're dealing with the other product that needs to come out from it. Whenever dealing with these mixed belt situations, it really complicates being able to have a fully compressed belt. This way, everything should be nice and evened out uh, in the end. It should produce, through having this unstacker here, this should make sure, guarantee that I always have this nice full throughput 15 per second belt coming down here without having to deal with any potential for needing lane balance shenanigans uh, in any of these steps. Oh boy, uh, so this is going to produce stone. As well as grade two. And I will, I will want to do this. Uh, how much stone? It's 15 total stone, so I don't need to worry about that throughput. And then it's seven and a half total copper grade two. So each one of these lines uh, is going to produce seven and a half stone and then 3.75 on the copper grade two. Whoops. Okay, that will that will do. So this stone line needs to uh, GTFO all the way down. All the way down to the bottom. Wonderful. Da -da. This combines. 
So this will be stacked stone and this is stacked ash output from here. I'm going to directly bring in stacked coke. Note, note, this is stacked coke. We're eating 4.32 stacked coke here. Uh, this would be more than seven stacked rock hole. That, that's generally why I've decided to use the coke here rather than rock hole directly, especially since I uh, now have something my bots can technically build by themselves. I have added construction zone expanders into this factory. And theoretically, the bots can build it for me. The issue is, of course, train throughput being able to support the full 75, not 75, 40 some odd rock hole in to make the 75 coke out that it can make. But uh, it is a fuel density thing, uh, reasoning here as we are joined again by by the pretty boy. There's a pretty boy. Yeah. Yeah. There's a pretty Ollie. Big boy. Ah. So I don't have to deal with as much of the stacked ash. It's my whole point there. Uh, and we shouldn't have any throughput issues, like, at all in this entire setup. Uh, with our voiding, at least. Because this will just be, I'll add in the stacked gravel as well. Let's see here. Um, this step brings in grade two and produces three plus rejects. Or, yeah, rejects, I think here. Yeah, copper rejects on this step. By the way, this whole build uses uh, 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 at least 128 total automated screeners, so you know, just a, just a few screeners needed for this. Okay, uh, I will need to unstack. Whoops. Four times, okay. Okay, that is all of the grade two in the thirty seven and a half. Grade two. Now the f fun part. We can no longer deal. We can no longer use stacking for the rest of the build. There, there, there be no more stacking available. So, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, eighteen point seven five. Divided by two, 9.375 is the total throughput on each of these four lines, which is unfortunately a number that is greater than seven and a half. Uh, you, you, you probably noticed that that number is a number that is bigger than 7.5. So I cannot simply merge the full output of two of these lines. I could filter the lines at a single filtration point. But remember what I said about the potential for throughput issues are like lane 
balancing issues there. There is potential for lane balance issues. But since we're not dealing with a full lane regardless, or a full, a full belt at any point regardless, I think that's what I'll do. Especially since the next step that's taking in the rejects, processing the rejects, it's two lines. Four to two. For all intents and purposes. So, if each one of these lines gets half the total output, of the rejects, we should be good, right? Like, pretty, pretty sure it should be fine. So here's how this will look. Just get the copper rejects to the right for that. That will go in there. This will go down. And then for these two, it's the same thing. Um, actually, that. Now, from that 18.75, I would need an I would need to add Oh boy. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I have exactly 3 lines. And oh look, I have 3 lines, but they're not all the same. Oh, this is the fun part. Oh, this is the fun part. I will need to balance these lines. I will need to balance these lines. Or do I? That should make it so that both of these belts have exactly the same throughput. They should be exactly the same. And the total value is less than 30. So... I mean, just for the heck of it, we could also lane balance now the difficulty will be going two into three evenly so I think no matter what I do I will need to have a larger container. Uh, in this case, I will use a shed. Now, yeah, I could, if I'm going to do this, I could just not here. Just not do any of that mess. And do that and then suddenly we have a three to three belt balancer huh oh right I did this a little too low
So I'll just do it like that with four in to three out. Just because that's easier. Easier on the positioning. All right, now the output from this. This uh, is going to make grade four and low grade rejects. So speaking of, I should check mark as we go uh, on here. So we've gotten to this step of 36. So rejects plus copper grade four. That is a lot of rejects. That's one to one to the grade three. Oh boy, these are, each one of these lines is 14.06 repeating items per second of combined throughput between the two items. Pretty sure I'll have to do another shed uh, down here. This guy, this guy, go there. Oi. Okay, so that is 14.07 copper grade four. Oh boy, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna want another shed. I will need to go to the mall to get another shed. I need to go back and get more belt regardless. So let's go ahead and do that now. I suppose I could place poles alternatively I can throw some power poles into the vehicle just so that I can have the bots bring me additional power poles because I'm pretty sure I need a bunch pretty sure I need a lot for this and of course once all of this logistics work is done which this logistics work is almost done uh, i do however need to filter the um gravel here because that's something i didn't do yet uh these need a gravel gravel filter and uh stacking All right, bots. How are my bots? I've got 1,380 bots currently, and 44 more go. 1424. Where are you all? And what are you all doing? I need you to bring me belt and all of the other stuff. Bring me things. There, we got some things. Bring me more things. More. My. Oh, here comes power poles. 
Now, where are you going with the belt? Ah, they were down there, and they have to charge. They brought it from here, this, this guy. So here comes the belt, as all the bots charge. Yes, glorious. The belt! Beautiful, glorious, wonderful belt! Oh yeah, they're going to try to give me electrolyzers as well. I don't need those. I need sheds. They brought me sheds. Eventually, I'm probably going to have requests for each size of warehousing item. But for now, shed will do. Uh, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to... I'm going to put in requests for storehouses and warehouses and just have all four sizes. Just give me all of them. And I will use the smallest that I need for any particular build because this storehouse has four per side. It's a four by four. The shed is two by two, of course. The warehouse is, I think that's six? Yeah, this is a six by six and then the depot uh, this is a 9 by 9. Hello, Dolly. Welcome, Dolly. Yeah. As Ollie immediately goes and starts starts licking, starts grooming. Hey, you. You gonna be nice? You gonna be nice to your sister? Where are you going? You don't need to leave. Aw, oh, poor baby. Poor Dolly. Why are you push your doll? Your sister away. Why'd you push sister away? He's like, but I was just licking her face. Well, that's what you do when you try to push her away. You try to, you try to be nice about it, but you're still pushing her away. You know she doesn't like it. All right, let's get back down. Keep on working. So, the other reason why I wanted to increase the amount of coke that I was making was so that I could produce a lot more acetylene on the train network. So here we go. We've got a bit of coke that will be needed to make acetylene. This is our next step. This this is this is the next step. It's uh it's not a particularly large factory, and I want to make a note here, I because I haven't made this note yet. All factories stack at 10 now. At minimum. Have you, have you noticed this? Because I've noticed this. Every factory that had a limit of 5 now stacks to 10. This is gasifiers, this is centrifugal pans... There's, there's, there were uh, quite a few buildings, actually. Not all of them. It was definitely a minority, but there were many buildings that only had stacked to five. They all stacked to ten now. Which is fantastic. I like a lot. Just wanted to note that. Because, yeah, 40, that would be a bunch of stacks. Uh, but now it's, now it's not so bad. This is a pretty basic factory that we'll be doing in order to make uh, acetylene. Acetylene that will be used for lead and titanium mining. This makes 500. Do I need five? Uh, yeah, I need more than 250. Note here that my, this plan currently on the lead is not, is not for the full 15 uh or not for the full like builds that i've been doing so far where i've been processing 75 ore uh to molten but when you consider i will also be needing silver 
at some point rather soon my god this is terrible <laughs> because it's gonna eat up 477.3 uh settling so if you if you look at this it's like oh yeah he's making 500 the the lead and the titanium plant isn't going to use that much it's going to use about half a little over half of it and then you look at silver it's like oh i'm gonna need two of this then that's a hundred coke per second <sighs> it's only just beginning with the coke demands uh but if if we were to look at the 75 how much does that make 60.75 so if i reverse this it would be 60.75 how much acetylene does it take to mine that much lead 681.9 681.9 it's 96.43 molten lead it is 4.29 lead dust. This is consistent whether or not I'm using it to make the plates or whether or not I'm using it to make the silver. I would ideally want to have a line processing 75 or making lead and a line processing 75 or making silver. It would make a little bit more than one silver. It would make a bit more than one, closer to one and a half, but... Still not much. Still not much, Silver. Uh, you really have to go high-grade processing to actually get proper Silver output from this. That all being said, I did not plan around the concept of 75 uh, or processing because it uses acetylene and because these things exist. And because lead mines exist, and we can spend drill heads on lead mines without having to spend acetylene on them. Now, this is telling me... Yeah, because this uses drill heads. Uh, and because, of course, we have Bob's modules. Of, like, of course we, we have Bob's modules. I'm going to use Bob's modules on these. Uh, when I can make modules. But we can't make lead mines until after circuit twos. Okay? Like, like after neuroprocessors even. Like, it's a while. It is, it is a while. They eat up Mark three mining drills. Fluid mining drills. Yeah, stainless steel, circuit twos, Neuroprocessors, cobalt chromium alloy, graphene, mechanical part one and two, ten part twos, self assembly monolayer material. Oh boy, look at all these beautiful things that make one entire lead mine. Twenty electric mining drills. And it's similar across the board with those with those big mines but i absolutely want those big mines big mines that is a blue science technology to unlock all these mines now the the main thing to note here is that getting blue science the process of getting blue science We'll have all this stuff. We'll have all this stuff by the time we need blue science. The problem will be, hey, how much lead am I going to need by that point? How much titanium am I going to need to get there? That's what I don't know at this point. It's like, how much lead and titanium and silver am I going to need to be able to get to that point? How painful will it be getting to that point to get to those big mines so I can adequately get the ore that I need um, and I will use big mines on lead on titanium on 
Nexlet uh, as well. Um, don't need it for iron. May want it on tin, but tin is like not really a thing that interests me. Uh, want it on aluminium, want it on chromium, and want it on zinc. Basically, I want the big mines for every ore type that uses a fluid to mine. With the exception of uranium. Because the uranium big mine eats gasoline. Whereas mining uranium through miners uses sulfuric acid it really depends on what i have at any one point as to which i would use what i have more of at any one point as for which i end up using um although some things may have gotten a specific extra input for not sure at this point i have to I have to look and find where i have uh other things oh yeah by the way this this uh, up here exists for salt. I need to mine this salt. Uh, might do that here today. Anyway, we're, we're back here. I need to finish this setup. I need to get the gravel processed or put onto the crap line. And stacked. There we go, that should do it. That should do that. Let's, uh... Let's power these. Come on, draw a straight line, please. That's all powered. That needs power. <laughs> One of the few lines in here that actually uses inserters. Because each one of these machines is 0 0.67, I figured, you know what? At that low of throughput, I may as well just use inserters. It needs power anyway. Now, many of these, yeah, it's like 0.8. I could still use inserters down here, and that would have saved, like, individual lines, a little bit of space. But, eh. Just, eh. I don't care. That gets balanced the building let's just draw this line here this is our longest piece of the puzzle yeah oh I need the water as well the actual doohickeys providing water Oh boy, bunch more power draw from this. Get rid of all of the hydrogen and we are providing the oxygen into these. Down here. Oh boy, um, so you are outputting grade four. 
you are outputting grade four and dust rejects, I should say. The things stuff. Click here. It is dust, but whatever. Low grade dust. You get put onto the crap line, and you merge up there. Now we have two. We have two lines of grade four, because, yeah, 14 plus 2.11, we're dealing with 16.18, that is a number that is, you know, bigger than 15. So, this is the part where I'm realizing that This is not adequate. Dang. Okay then. There is a solution. And it looks like this. Uh, so what was the problem here? The problem is that I don't have the throughput to merge borax with either coke or great for copper uh, and I need to copy all that mess not all of that mess but all of this mess There we go. And that will be the stacked Coke input. So there's the stacked Coke. I need the stacked coke and I need a line for a deborax. So that will be the borax. And that should be everything. That should be everything. Gosh, that was like nearly half the stream. For all intents and purposes, half of the stream just to this, like, my goodness. Ah, we're not quite done. We're not quite done. Uh, there is something I've missed that I will need to address back down there. Uh, we have to go down anyway to 
run the rest of the pipe, but still. Uh, so the borax comes out stacked. And we need more than a belt of it. So we have to bring it down stacked and then unstack it at the destination on each line. So this is a great spot right here to unstack. Just need some power to unstack it. And then over here, unstack it, power that stacker, and we're good to go. Let's bring up this line to do the supplies to the supply station. And ta-da, we've done the thing. Our borax at copper. Rock coal at copper. Rock coal? No. Coke at copper. So let's get our borax. Let's get our Coke. And let's get our copper ore. And that barring any major mistakes uh, is that I'm going to add another one of these down here just for completeness sake and that is that on molten copper just need to add the locomotive and output the stuffs. Oh boy. We have things. They have arrived. Supply, depot, Full cargo, circuit condition, auto magic. So, beauty of this build is that it is grade 4 processing. Grade 4 processing. I am going to need grade 4 copper for PDMS. Uh, in particular for the dimethyl dichlorosilane uh, that is used to make... PDMS uh, as part of the graphene roll build or graphene sheets for rolls yeah so this chain this chain right in here it eats up a lot of stuff you also apparently now need PDMS to make biofets as part of intelligent units because they made intelligent units more difficult by adding photonic chips, organic quantum batteries, and biofets to the list of things. <sighs> yeah. As of, of course they did. They added more ingredients, even more ingredients. Yeah, so the polydimethyl siloxane here is... Uh, in need of the dimethyl dichlorosilane, which needs our copper. Glorious, beautiful, wonderful stuff. Now to watch until we get existent amounts of molten copper, just to make sure that I haven't made any egregious mistakes in this lineup. You can see I clearly do not have enough trains moving the ore so that's step one to fix i think i will need at least five or six trains just to be able to support the equivalent throughput of 75 items per second 
uh, even though yes it is only 15 it's the equivalent of 75 due to the stack changes the stack size gets cut by five uh, in the stacked variant it does not change the density per stack on the items and that is where our problem lies as we're just not holding up enough stuff in our trains compared to the distance that the trains need to travel and the time that it takes for them to travel that distance. Uh, okay, we have stuff going down to get voided. We have our grade 3 here. The grade 3 is processing into rejects and grade 4. We have some grade 4 already making its way down the line, down into here, eventually. <laughs> And have we made any? No, not yet. Got this stuff processing to grade four. Slowly but surely. We are making our way, getting some grade four copper in. So everything has functioned thus far. That is my alarm to indicate that we are halfway through the stream. Oh boy. Oh joy, oh bliss. Half way. They have finished a product. We have made a tiny bit of molten copper. It exists. Huzzah, it's moving. So that as they say, should be that. It's a little difficult to tell. Are we getting, we, are we getting stacked ash output? Have I set these to be whitelist? Have we even had enough cycles to consume a unit of stacked coke is the next question because i don't know if this this should tell me on the tooltip the spent fuel result uh, i just saw it go down to four yeah four two five so that did not output the stacked ash so i need to fix those inserters yeah thought so these are set to blacklist when they should be set to whitelist there we go i found an error this is why I watch before leaving. Watch to make sure it's working correctly before leaving. Because things like that are easy to miss. It It's also a... It's very, very bad that spent fuel result inventory is not displayed in the building tooltip when I hover over the building. I really need to know what is in the spent fuel inventory if there's anything in the spent fuel inventory when I hover over this building. Because obviously it doesn't show it. That's so dumb. Anyway, everything appears to be moving correctly given the lack of the full input throughput. So, it's good. It's it's fine. I can define the molten copper under pyro. Whoops. And when I come back from the break, 
we're going to set up casting of plates over there. Uh, I'll note that uh, this 113.2, uh, yeah, it makes mo uh, just a little bit more than 75. I'll be left with a small amount, but I don't intend on using the full 75 potential production anytime soon. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit because I am going to make 15 at least small parts per second, uh, at least this much. Uh, I do plan on doing this uh, factory and having it on the network uh, for now. And I plan on eventually scaling it to 75 per second, which needs a bit more iron than I'm currently producing. Just just a bit more iron than I'm currently producing. Um, although I do have the spare to do it. Um, yeah, I, I would like this much. Uh, and I want to use this on things like tar, for example. Because we can obtain tar through small parts. Uh, ideally through the drilling fluid 2 recipe. Yeah, because if I want a thousand, that's 20 small parts. <laughs> I, I, I think I would prefer... Yeah, that many. That many is better. If I want a thousand tar. I, d I don't know if I'll do this really in the grand scheme. It's just, it's better overall than this stupidity on the bitumen seeps. They did not... They did not... Uh, hello? Oh. You know, it would help if the train had fuel. Uh, actually, you know what? Stop. Stop and go to the go to the mall, restock, and then I'll head off. I'm going to take a brief break. I'll be back in just a few minutes.
and I have returned. Welcome back. I I found the babies. I found I found the babies' toys. Yes, we've got we've got the chipmunk. This one's Ollie's, and we've got the uh, I call it the lemur. This one's this one's Dolly's. She's got her little lemur, and he's got his chipmunk. All right, let's let's get back to it. Hello, Ollie. Yeah, there's the boy. He has returned just on time, right on time. Hi, big boy likes his likes his chest webs. Huh? Likes his chest webs. Yeah, pretty boy. Yeah, big boy. There we go. There we go. All right. Restock me. I need stuffs. I need all of my stuffs and things. Bring me, bring me stuffs and bring me things. Don't think I need particularly many casting units. Uh, I think I think that much is fine. Uh. Ba ba ba. Copper. Copper plate. From Molten. 75. Copper plate from Molten. Four entire casting units. 50 entire units of hot air. And 100 total units of Molten Copper. Out of three Borax and a Sand Casting. A Sand Casting. Oh boy. I may have to scale up my Sand Castings relatively soon. But, uh, yeah, this, this is what I will place at my casting area. At my casting area will have access to Molten Iron, Molten Tin, and Molten Copper at this point in time. I don't think there are currently any alloys I can make using those uh, items. Uh, and I will actually have to add a solid input train station for advanced castings at some point, as well as solid output stations for the things that we can make using the advanced castings. Um, maybe I'll have to do that as a separate factory, even though it would require bringing in a whole bunch of molten metals a second time. It just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fact, a lot of, uh, supply stations. It's a lot of supply stations that I would need to add, as well as that solid input station for advanced castings. We're talking about not only adding stations for every ore, or every metal in here, nearly every metal. I've gotten three so far. We need to add many more just for the just for the metals and then adding in every alloy nearly every alloy on top of that in that much space eh maybe maybe Every alloy and every advanced cast item, not every advanced cast item, just to just be clear, there are some advanced cast items that are not viable unless the numbers have changed. I will recheck the numbers on some of them, but they were not all viable previously compared to making them normally. It was, in some cases, worse to try to use the advanced castings than to just make normally. I think I did a analysis of this at some point. Okay, 
Yeah, I did do an analysis of this, exploring advanced casting recipes back in February. Um, so unless the numbers have changed... And this was with vanilla modules, mind you, and vanilla productivity modules. Of course, this is completely different with Bob's modules uh, and having access to 40% productivity buildings or buildings modules. Uh, that absolutely will favor standard recipes most of the time compared to advanced casting. But again, I do still need to run the numbers again. Um, as of... February, I said advanced items tend to be a huge savings, particularly with small parts. So the advanced casting on small parts is one to look into. Uh, apparently tinned cables uses slightly more copper, but it saves a bunch of tin. Bolt casting is worse although it doesn't use advanced castings the iron pipes and undergrounds weren't a metal savings at all niobium pipe casting was supremely better so let me particularly the underground pipe I made note of um, on here yeah in particular the the reason why these things are better is you're not spending regular pipe segments on the pipe to grounds and you're not spending niobium plates so you're saving a ton of salt uh, in this process by not having to convert the complex to plates um, so that's great that's great uh, still uh, da, 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 da. The multi purpose pipes and pipe to grounds. Let's see. Completely removes niobium from the equation. So, under normal circumstances, you need Niobium Plate to make multipurpose pipes, but when you do the advanced casting, you no longer need Niobium at all. So that's a... that's definitely a thing that we will do uh, da, 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 when we have access to it, eventually. Um, engine unit casting removes rubber, saves on Duralumin but will require molten steel and ab is absolutely worth doing. Equipment chassis is more than a two times savings on copper, aluminium, and tin, aka all of the involved metals in that process. Lead containers save on lead and niobium and uses way less molten steel than iron. Yeah, and that's all with the hot air recipes. But, again, productivity will will change things a lot. So I have to be very, very mindful that productivity changes things. Quite considerably. Uh, Bob's productivity changes things considerably. Uh, you use both. So let's grab that doohickey. The what, what? Oh. Okay, uh, I need to do this differently. Uh, 
Ta-da. Okay. Uh, loaders or just regular thingies? Uh, that... It's a bit more throughput. So... Yeah. We'll do this. Ta-da! Alright, each of these produces a lot. So, in reality, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna copy the first... I'm gonna copy this from iron. Paste it down there. And that is that. Ta. Da. Now to just add copper. R. Molten copper at casting. Ta da. Bring this down, and then we're done. Done with copper completely. Now I want to. I need to admit something here. I had intended this part to be serviced by bots eventually. Which is why it's a little cramped in here. I I think at some point this casting factory will be bot serviced. And in the process of that would help with keeping this compact to fit as many uh, stations as I can down here in particular. Now, the question is... Uh, so that is defined. We are just filling up on the molten copper. It's just taking some time. We don't we don't have a full train yet. And as I mentioned, this will eat up a hundred units. Oh, you you hear something? You hear something? Big boy. Something caught the kitty's attention. Oh joy, oh bliss. Yeah, there you go. All comfy. All comfy in a ball. With the babies. With the toys. In comfort. Okay. Just add train. I'm gonna add train. I'm gonna change name here. D. Copper. Plates. S copper plates add locomotive, the most loco of the locomotives. Boink boink. Ba -ba. Copper plate. Auto magic. Go, go, go. Do the thing. And that is that. We are done with that. Define copper plates. Mall. M copper plates. 
plates, plates. Done. So what I've done, what I have done at the mall, uh, that I haven't mentioned yet, is um, unstacking at each location. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure most, most everything, everything that I bring to the mall is going to be a stacked product. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're we're just gonna unstack, and it will be fine. We'll be we'll be fine. I've I've got the logs, I've got the tin, and I've got the iron, and I've, and I've got manure. But the manure, uh, is temporary, ish. I'm doing the unstacking up here, here, at the moment. Uh, that that's going up to help with other things. Yeah. With circuit production. Oh boy. Speaking of mall, let's head back. Pick up more stuffs so that I can make acetylene. Good old 500 acetylene per second. I have to decide where I'm going to do this. And also where I'm going to mine lead and where I will process lead. Uh, by the way, we are not going to finish like lead processing today. I'm pretty sure even though the factory is relatively small for the amount that I need. Uh, do I even need lead ore provided onto the train network? As ore? Yes, for arsenic. I will need lead ore provided as ore onto the train network. Interesting. Iron, copper, rich clay, antimony, and lead ore all required to make arsenic. Are there other ways? That is the only way of making arsenic. Well, all right then. That is that, as they say. Let me put down a train station where I can make this stuff. I will do this here. Whoops. Uh, undo that. There we go. And I need to grab factories for the acetylene. So let's see. 25 high pressure furnaces, 25 soil extractors, and 40 gasifiers. Probably don't have that much stocked on any of these, but we shall see. I have the high pressure furnaces and I should have the soil extractors. At least I'm, what I'm worried about is the gasifiers and having enough stacks of those. I have exactly 40. Well, wouldn't you know it. I have exactly the amount that I need for what I need to do. And of course, this 500 will get scaled considerably as we go. For now, though, do that. Down we go. <laughs> There's a, uh... There was a package that I sent out with a uh, rather expensive Game Boy Color that I had made. Uh, one of my 
quote-unquote premium Game Boy Colors with, like, full, full metal case that had sold uh, that needed to go out as parcel select ground shipping since it had a uh, lithium ion battery in it. That's just been taking ages to get to its destination. Uh, it is absolutely late to arrive by several days at this point, but it had finally gotten a tracking update and it's like, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness it's not lost because that would hurt so much uh, if that was lost. But yeah, it is definitely that time of year where there are lots and lots of potential delays in shipping, especially on uh, items that are going ground shipping, parcel. Why in the world did this not paste down the requester chest? Or the, the, the requester doohickey. Like, huh? Whoops. Like, just to go, do the, do the thing. There you go. Ba, ba, ba. I took these off for a reason. There. Beta. Beta, beta, beta. You are coke at acetylene you are supplying acetylene okay and you are depot for acetylene. Make sure we get all that out of the way right off the bat and get one of these going. That should keep the name. Okay, let us begin what and where and how and stuff and things. Uh, let me try to kill this as best I can. Goodbye. Still haven't done, like, long reach for any of this. Um, yeah, I guess we have to start here with our 25 of these. Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How much do I want in a line? I'm thinking this will be 13. And I'll have two lines of 13 just to keep it somewhat reasonable on the width. As I've said before, I don't really want to go beyond the halfway mark on these builds. I think that they look better if I keep them constrained in some way. Like, I I could have had really, really, really long individual lines in here. Like, I, I could have had all of this in one super long line, right? But it just, it doesn't look good that way. I like having this limit to approximately the halfway mark. At least with this build, I can, in fact, fit four of these in a full section, segment. Just like so. They they fit. They fit. They overlap. They mirror rotationally in such a way that I can fit that there, and I can fit one up here, and I can fit one over here as well if I really wanted to. That's just... Yeah, it works. I like when... It just works like that. And in order to 
make it so that it just works like that. I have to have some sort of a constraint to the width of these things. Yes, this is 10 per second. How convenient that this is, in fact, 10 per second. And I can use these. Good old mechanical inserters. Okay. Water. Do I want to put water at the beginning or at the end? I think I'll put it at the beginning and save the space on the side. Only needed one, but I'll do two. Just keep it keep it nice, looking nice. Hmm. So, you know, my original reasoning for deep water wells for using deep water wells was that, hey, they're a size 5 entity, 5x5 five five entity, which is larger than the vanilla yellow belt distance, so in the early game, I would have to deal with the fact that you can't throw an underground belt under these. Oh, wait. Pyadons has changed. And now you have longer underground belts at yellow belt tier. It's like, oh, well, that's lovely. That that's just that that's great. That that's fa fantastic, yes. Be beautiful, glorious stuff. I mean, I li I like having the distance, don't get me wrong, but it's sort of <laughs> sort of defeated the purpose of having these as 555 entities. Uh, okay, we have to deal with 15 and 10. I know you can't really see here. I'll do this in a way that we can actually, you know, see it. So that'll be you in the end, and this will be the unstacked coke that should that should be fine, right? Yeah. Looks fine by me. Okay, that's part one. Convenient spot there to pull down. You are outputting up to 10, so I'll just use loaders to each. This build is going to be convenient, not only in the fact that it makes 500 per second of acetylene, but also it can be scaled quite nicely by doubling this build. Uh, 35, oh boy. Uh, or t yeah, hmm. Hama. I think I'm going to need more landfill. I don't know about you, but I, th I think we may, in fact, need a bit more landfill. But we shall see. Am I able to stack? Calcium carbide. Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. That's good, 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 good to know. Um, yeah, and I don't need to stack this stuff. This stuff here 
is stacked, and we'll need to unstack a couple of times, three times at least. But on a line of 20, how do I want to do this? I guess it's two lines of 10. But, uh, spacing. Spacing is always the issue. Okay. 10. Uses more than 15 coke. So I will need to run a stacked line that gets unstacked further down. Uh, or two unstacked or two unstacked lines, just do a double. Just do a double! And yes, this does need to be moved down literally one tile. <laughs> just one tile. Uh, from here, it's pretty much the same as above, just a bit longer. And I have to run that extra belt as well. This goes down all the way at the end. Whereas this just gets copied. Across like so. Um... That is that. It'll be easier to just unstack two like this. Throw that in here and then underground. Oh god, this is gonna be... This is gonna be Twixy. Uh, copy that. Make it easier. No, I don't need it that far, though. I need it at... Uh... It stops at, like, at least eight. That should do it. Yes, that, that should do it. That feeds the last three, technically, but eh, whatever. I know it's very difficult to see because these are very, very, very badly made buildings. But yeah, it, it looks like this now. That that's what we're that's what we're doing. I could move this like a tile up, but eh, whatever. All all of that back there. In case you in case you couldn't see it. Because you can't see it, because it's blocked by these stupid pipes. Or whatever these towers are, these stacks, smokestacks-ish things. Big gas boiler thing here. It's a pressure tank. Because <laughs> it's a high pressure furnace. Alright, now 40 of these gas fires after I get these outputs. How much each do you output? And I need two of these. Right. Two and a half. That's 25 for 10. Hmm. Well, five is two and a half. 
That can be stacked. Um, we can do the stacking at the same time for both of these. Because we've only got two thingies. Uh, yeah. Because I don't intend on scaling this outwards like this. This is going to be a build that makes 15. Or make, makes 500 per second of the acetylene. And if I want more than 500, I'm going to make the build again. Is that yeah that is that now uh, fortunately because we can stack these uh, 50 is less than a yellow belt of stacked product uh, by fifth uh, by a factor of 25 25 units short of that full throughput uh, so we can now just go into our 40 in here of these guys. Now, how do I want to do this? Do we want four lines of 10? I think for space's sake, that's going to be what I have to go with. Yeah, just for space reasons, being about halfway there. This would be the halfway mark. I think. Here. One, two. Huh? One, the. One, two. Yeah, this, this spot right here. This is, this is halfway. So. That limit there will make it so that I can't really go any longer than 10 to be evenly divisible uh, into 40. Because we can't do a line of 40. We can't do a line of 20. We don't have enough for 20 either. So we'll stick with 10. Oh boy, I will need more pipe. That's that's one thing I know that I will need out of, out of all this. We will absolutely need additional pipe. Here, let's get the pipes for this placed. Uh, so 10 uses exactly 12 and a half. Well, wouldn't you know it? Oh yeah, I've also messed up. Because of course I've messed up. Uh, I in fact need two of these, not just one. I, in fact, do need two of this. should do it. <sighs> Ta-da! There we go. Now we can do... <clears throat> so I mentioned about Landfill, right? <laughs> now I'm probably gonna need more. Can I get away with this? 
I'm gonna say no and go down one more tile. Okay, because this is 12 and a half, I can unstack here. Yeah. I do not regret this decision. Uh, we do not need a output belt on this, so... Uh, but what we do need is water. Now, I have done the water over here on this side, so I'll keep that up match what's above and then just add that three more times yeah that looks about right that's that looks right yeah it's all it's great every everything there's nothing wrong with this picture with this image Yeah, we need, uh, we need more landfill. Just, just, uh, just a bit more landfill. And I, yeah, yeah I could have moved this up a little bit more and we'll, we would have been better centered, but uh, I do need more belt. I need more pipe, so may as well go back. Um, because I don't have any landfill in my train. I should probably put some landfill in my train. Or, you know, just get long reach and use it just to fill in the land, uh, the water that I can see, all the water I can see uh, on the map. Just ev everything on the map that I can currently see. Just fill it all in. Use up as much of my landfill as I have. All like, oh, I don't know. How much do I have in here? 48,000 units of landfill. You know, long range would also let me pick this up uh, from this chest whenever I need it. That's sort of why I don't use land use long range or far reach or whatever the mod is. Ah, just a mod that makes reaching basically infinite length. It's because you can, you can use that to get around inventory limitations, and I don't really want that. Um, I d I don't want it available as something that I could do because I know that I would make use of it. So I don't want the temptation. Now, having upgrades to the default reach distance, absolutely, that's fine. Uh, I absolutely want that as a quality of life measure as the game goes on. You can reach further. But being able to reach just infinitely right at the beginning, like, eh, nah, not really. That that does remove, like, the, the entirety of the inventory mechanic from the game like the whole inventory management aspect of the game is just gone the moment you can access any chest from anywhere but you have to offset that like well how fun slash interesting of a mechanic is it to have to manage what's in your inventory is it 
a core enough aspect of the experience that it's worth having? Or does it deter too much from the in your personal intended experience? The experience that you want out of the game. Does it deter too much from it? Because, you know, at the scale that I'm building at... Having inventory limits is not particularly fun or engaging for me. And you can see I'm already justifying to myself. I'm, I'm already rationalizing. Making excuses to use like long reach or far reach or whatever to give myself infinite reach so I can just grab whatever items I need whenever I need them. Without having to make trips back and forth. You know, that's a that's another aspect. You know, if I'm streaming this game... If we're streaming here, do we really want to sit and watch me keep going back over and over and over again to the mall? to pick stuff up. Like, do, do we really want to have to sit through that over and over again? If not, then a mod that gives me infinite reach would be required to alleviate that just so that we can continue with progress, you know? Also, I am deeply disappointed that we have not gotten any copper. Ah, but we do have the train moving because it filled up with copper. Excellent. So we do have stacked copper. It is it is here. It is glorious and it is magnificent. And we are providing it at the train station. Oh boy, we have copper. It is glorious. Magnificent stuffs here. Okay, what I need to do now is I need to go over and I need to delete this. And we will no longer consume copper off of the bus. One last thing, right? I don't think I have any borax that I need at the mall, so I'll get rid of that. I'll get rid of... I can get rid of a number of things in here that I don't need here. You know, like, do I really need Augs here? No, not not in particular. Uh, I I need the melamine for melamine resin. I need nichrome. I need chromium and most of this stuff. I don't need cotton guts, I'm pretty sure. At least not now. Uh, probably don't even need that urea. Or boron trioxide or the, the optical sets or the lab instruments or whatever. Probably don't need all those things. But as I get stuff on the train network uh, and provided onto the mall, I can use this as like a checklist. As a as a checklist. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention this. Yeah, like, between streams, I've done Fawagi. I did Fawagi between streams. Hey. I And I went and I showed it, too. I, I, as, when I was here, it's like, I, you saw it earlier. Yeah, I didn't, I hadn't done this before. Uh, I've done it now. I said, I said I would probably do this between streams because this is such a simple build. Um, it's just one building multiple times, and then one more building multiple times. Two buildings! Just, you know, 108 of one and 30 of another. This makes 15 uh, per second of Fawgi. Pretty, pretty sure it's 15 per second. You know, just continuing towards getting into the Vrauk food, but just without the Vrauk food. Because <laughs> uh, I wanted seaweed stage two, and clearly we're not there yet. Yeah, it would it would remove the need for having to go back to the mall so many times to 
grab like additional pipes or additional landfill or additional um, belt and uh, electric poles, etc. Like if I need the infrastructure, why do I have to take ten five minutes just to go back to the mall and come back when I've restocked? Because each restocking trip is several minutes. As you've just seen multiple times today, I can, if I had a long reach mod, a far reach mod that let me just grab things from the mall, uh, that would mean more time spent on actually building stuff, you know? Which is what we're here for, actually building stuff. So I'll probably add it. I'm, I've gone and I've rationalized to myself at this point. Ah, da da. Get powered all this while I'm here. Auto save is auto saving. Now, landfill. That, and while I'm at it, I would get a water fill mod so I can actually have water where I need water. That, like there is a mod it's called waterfill <laughs> and it and it works with alien biomes it has a compatibility with alien biomes it lets you make shallow water all right let me do that and do that there we go excellent I need to kill all of the slaked lime. Uh, well, that's not a good spot for you. Or you? Or you? There we go. We did it. Okay, power. Power to the buildings. Copy the line. That lets me place all the power poles. Alright, that should be everything powered. I need to run the last of this set of logistics. That's the end. All right. Then get all the pipes together. And away we go.
Ha. <laughs> yeah, the lack of splitters in the beginning is, uh, can be a bit fr uh, stressful if you've never dealt with that situation before. Um, just inserters are splitters. That that's the first. Con that's the concept you need to wrap your head around. Is that inserters work belt to belt. This is something that practically never comes up in a vanilla playthrough. But inserters can move items from one belt to another. And that is that is your splitter. It's not as... You're limited by the throughput of the inserters. So you need multiple of them. But you can work with that as a mechanic. And, and they are able to be filtered with one item. You can whitelist individual items on belts with these mechanical inserters as well. So you can actually do your filter splitting. Well, the lane thing, yeah, you can always deal with the lane thing. Or you could install Bob's adjustable inserters and tell them what lane you want to have it output on. But yeah, the lane, the lane thing is, that's just part of Factorio. That, that you just need to know. And work around. It's a consistent behavior for a reason. The developers absolutely intended intend that behavior and they keep it that way to keep it consistent. And you can plan and make blueprints and do all these wonderful things knowing that an inserter will always output on the opposite belt the opposite side of the belt furthest and it will always output here and mods mods make it so that you can have it output to the inner side okay one last thing we need to void the co2 from this and that is acetylene finished the factory part of it at least supply depot full cargo circuit condition auto magic define acetylene And that is that. Excellent. Lead! Lead mining! Let us head on over to a spot. I'm thinking of mining this lead. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty dense. I will need to set up my factory there. Let's head on over. Yeah, that looks, that's, that is nice. I can fit like six of these uh, in a square. Yeah, I can totally put up to six of these in a single square. Uh, that would be 3,000 acetylene per second. I've gone and I've left without actually watching and seeing if it actually works or not, but uh, I am I have some confidence that this should be functional and produce acetylene. I'm, I'm pretty sure it works. Uh, the issue, of course, is if I wanted 3,000 acetylene, then I would need, you know, 300 uh, units of the uh, coke to do so because it does it, it seems that it is 10 to 1 oops we missed a spot we just spent 50 to make 500 gosh and then if you look at this of course uh, 
Ooh. Why, hello there. Why, hello there. That's, uh, that's nice. I like that. that that's good stuffs. That's some good stuffs right there. Oh yeah, that's that's some good stuffs right there. Especially once we get access to uh, you know, four module slots. Ooh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna save some time. That's gonna save some effort. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Then how about you? Do you also? Do you all yes we do. Oh yes we do. Oh oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, that's that's going to be nice. Oh yes. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yes, that is. That is going to be glorious. That will be wonderful. Does it make any big difference to play with my or settings versus Pi default settings well? Uh, yes. Short answer is yes. It is going, it is a big difference. You will have to hunt down multiple ore patches if you want any amount of ore at all, <laughs> frankly. Like, the ore patches are significantly smaller and rarer. I will need to bring in acetylene, so I will need this a requester fluid station, that one. Now, if you're using uh, resource spawner overhaul, that is going to also affect things. I should not have put that so close. It will be fine. Oh, right, I need... <laughs> Great! Uh, I do need to go back, because I need to pick up... Fluid miners. F fluid mining drills! Yeah, that's, that's the thing I need. Right there. Oh boy, yeah, gee, if, uh, it would be so nice if I could just, you know, if I could just, you know, click it, click it and take it. If I could, if I could, if I could just click it and take it without having to go there. Ah, boy. We just keep on moving without having to spend the time going all the way back. Yeah, this isn't going to be an issue because I'm not going to be mining uh, an absolute ton of lead ore. Like, I'm not going to go above four compressed lead belts. Like, I'm not going to go beyond four compressed lead belts. My base is massive. Yes, it is. Yes, my, ba my base is huge. Um, it's nowhere near big enough for what I need it to be, because I'm in the extremely slow and arduous and somewhat tedious process of getting everything that I've built on my bus put onto the train network and doing it in a way that I'm scaling it as well and doing these processes in the most advanced way methods that I have available to me now <laughs> at this phase of science. So yeah, it's taking a while, extremely long time um 
I would hazard a guess and say that it's going to be probably another 150 hours at least before I get pretty much all the stuff on. It It's going to take a while. It's, it's, go, it's going to take a while. I've got a lot of the major stuff out of the way, but there's some extremely major stuff that I do need a lot more of that is currently bottlenecking everything, uh, in particular rubber uh, and latex. Uh, but in order to do that, it's like, well, I need Vrauk for the latex. I need to get some Vrauk food to do the most advanced Vrauk recipe that I currently have available. And in order to get into Vrauk food, I'm going to need more seaweed for agar. And we are currently working on getting the tech for the seaweed, so I couldn't actually do that today. Because uh, I still need to get this tech for this seaweed recipe using limestone, saline, and CO2. So that I could build this factory producing 75 seaweed out of 137 seaweed crops. A few. And uh, I guess I do still need steam, like, on the network as well, on the trains. Um, but that's actually the easy part, because I technically already have a train station where I am making steam. It is providing molten uh, salt all the way up here. Yeah, I like, I have a train station all the way up here where I'm making a thousand steam already. Per, per second, uh, it uses like, yeah, almost all of it, almost all of it as it stands, but I happen to have a ton of places here that are currently making power that can be converted into producing exclusively steam, since I have a much better way of getting into power now than regular steam steam power. Any hoozle. I am here. I am restocked. I need to grab fluid mining drills. Mark two. Probably don't need that many of them, but oh well. Oh, I need 17 for this lead plates for the silver plates it's a yeah it's a few more than that but i will i will worry about steam about blah about silver later uh what would i even need silver for at this point of the game there is such a thing as a one-dimensional photonic crystal. God, I hope that does not stand for dimensional. But it, it's the first thing that came to my mind. Yes, the a 1D photonic crystal. Uh, I'm in the train, right? Oh, right, I... <laughs> I can't move the train if I have this window open. It's extremely frustrating that you I, I can't operate the train with this window open. Uh, I am not going to do the solder recipe. Oh yeah, fetal serum. Right, that that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. The big giant thing. And glass cores, yeah, this is a big giant thing. Glass cores needed for circuit twos. Looks like there is an aluminium silver alloy that will exist at some point. At Mark III. Polycrystalline cells, acetyl hydride. Uh, excuse me. Acetaldehyde. That's that's the word. Acetaldehyde. Okay, tributyl phosphate for a hot solution. How, how wonderful. Hot solution. Just... <laughs> we take MIBC, TBP, zinc chloride, salt solution, and we make quote-unquote hot solution. A mother liquor? 
Really? A mother liquor, huh? What the hell sort of a rabbit hole is this? All that for lithium carbonate. Oh, and you get more mother liquor out. Great. Lithium hydroxide. All that for a plate. All that for denatured... Oh, God. All, all that for denatured size mine, huh? Just as denatured size mine. Oh, that's interesting. Though. That they even have a recipe that gives just denatured size mine rather than all of the everything with it. Have they done that with everything else? Is there an only non-conductive phasogen recipe? I don't think so. No. So I guess if you want to get into additional denatured seismite without having to deal with any of the extra stuff, there is a way now. Anyway, let's get back. Uh, do I have thoughts on how transport drones changes Pandon's playthrough? Um, I have never used the transport drones mod, so I cannot tell you the answer to that question. I have no idea exactly what it adds or how it adds it. mods.factorio.com Transport drones. Okay, transport drones. Adds a new transport system to the game. Duh. With a request and a supply depot, a road, and transport drone. Okay. So, cars. So it's... It, it's cars that like semi tractor trailer type situations where you can just go from depot to depot over ground distances this this is very very similar to a system that is part of Pyandon's mods that is going to come back relatively soon, actually. It's actually part of uh, Pi Alien Life. Part of Pi Alien Life. Uh, it would make distance traveling logistics a little bit easier, I think. But there is a very, very similar system uh, called the Caravan System that is part of Pi Andalons that actually uses augs as your transporter it basically puts stuff in an au in a backpack on the augs and the augs will walk it to the destination uh that system isn't in the game right now it was removed because it's very buggy but we just got a teaser that it is now working and improved Right, and there's a, uh, there's a nuclear backpack version of the AUG that, uh, ahem, <clears throat> if you're using enemies, if you have, if you have biters enabled, uh, you can send the AUG off to, uh, basically blow itself up with a nuclear explosion in the middle of a biter pack, ahem. <clears throat> Uh, and there's other variants that are higher tech 
that I would expect to come at some point as well. Uh, but it's basically point, transport between a point A and a point B with a vehicle transporting goods between point A and point B. Uh, I don't know exactly how fleshed out it's going to be. I just put like 20 down. I don't need that many, I think. Oh yeah, I, de I definitely don't need 20. Um, oh, I do need 18.52. Interesting. Uh, so 15.4 is going to be 14. All right. Lines of seven, huh? I'll do two of you. In a box. This is my box. This is my box. I don't go anywhere without my box. Oh, come on, you. Don't do that. If you understand that reference, I applaud you as a person of, like, genuine culture. And actually relevant to the holiday season. Okay, let me... Get these put into... Stackers. This will be fine. I just have to do this here. Oh, wonderful. Acetylene. Whoops. Copy. There we go. Ta da! Locomotive. Wagons. Supply, depot, full cargo, and circuit condition auto magic. And that is that. Just gotta provide power to these buildings, which I completely forgot about. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I can't do this this way. That sucks. I do need that extra space. Uh, which also means I will need to have this. Lovely. Unfortunately, these buildings are sized in such a way that um, it's not possible for me to add a power pole in between here when I have it set up like this. Unfortunate, but uh, it's just the way of things sometimes. Ah, uh, rocks. So many rocks. Okay, that should be ore mining, the lead ore mining. There we go. Ta-da. We has the ore. The stacked ore. It is glorious. 
magnificent stuff. And that will load. So we are now finished with that. Now just to go over my plan for processing said lead ore, uh, it's pretty simple. We screen it into grade one. We take that grade one and we impact crush to grade two as well as stone that we need to eliminate. We screen the grade two two into grade three and additional grade one that loops back to grade two to one to two to one to two to one to two until you run out of stuff and you just end up with a net gain of grade two overall and all that will become grade three at its ratio proper ratio between two and three all that grade three will be secondarily crushed into lead dust we will add lead dust to graphite and borax to make molten lead, and that molten lead will become plates in the end. Now, this lead dust can also be used to make silver directly. It can make silver. The problem is... is a lot to make one. Even just one unit. Like, even point one unit. Like, it's... Ah, uh, like 0 0.2, 0 0.25, something like that. Like 15 ore does not make much uh, silver. Like even at 15 ore. I think it's like 0 0.3 repeating-ish. Not even, not even. Like 0.3 is more than 15. <laughs> like, oh goodness. Yeah, it's pretty awful ratio. But we has ore. The ore is in the wagons. I can define lead ore down here. All the way down the list for the ores uh, here. So between streams, I'm probably going to add the uh, whatever reach mod I want to use to... Uh, be able to reach infinitely, uh, fill up all the water with landfill uh, around this map, and uh, work on getting the molten lead casting finished. I would like to finish the molten lead casting between streams. Uh, just do that small factory here, copy it, produce silver out of it, out of the dust. Um, and go from there. Our next stream on Thursday, I would like to be focused on getting, you know, the Vrauk rendering for the uh, for the formic acid. You know, just just a bit of formic acid. Uh, I would very much like to have this done. Uh, doing doing this by then, but we'll see. It all comes down to tech rate. Uh, and figuring out what else I need to do in this whole process. Uh, considering, oh hey, we need CO2. Th th does that justify making a CO2 factory to provide it here? Like, should I have a separate CO2 factory? Or should I try to just make CO2 here? Because you could, si we could recycle additional... Uh, thingies, seaweed. We could cycle seaweed into here, but I believe we actually have a better way. Hold on. Do we not have... Oh, god dang it. We still don't have this. <sighs> we still don't have... The phytoplankton recipe. Oh, god, that doesn't come for a long time. What? Chemical science. Wow, they really screwed you. Ah. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the d stream for the day, folks. We got and we've made... Uh, we've made copper and we've made uh, acetylene and we've started mining lead from the acetylene. With the acetylene. I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Otaku Showboat. If... 
you have enjoyed today's stream, please be sure to do all of the social and engagement stuff down below the video. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed, and hit the notification bell. Consider becoming a member of the channel by hitting the great big blue join button and supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash otakushoboot if you are so inclined and able. I will, of course, be back on Thursday with more of our playthrough. I will see you all then.